Hi there. The third and last video on sustainable development is about the sustainable development system in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is located in the subtropical region with rich natural resources. The special geological background of Hong Kong has created hilly environment with beautiful seashores. Balancing urban and rural area is important in maintaining our sustainability. Hong Kong is also setting a very good example as a city, how to balance conservation and development and practice sustainable urban development. This may be a mission impossible to achieve as our city is ex expanding quickly with the threats of urban development or land use crisis. Our natural environment is under threat of urbanization. This decade is UN decade on biodiversity in Hong Kong. Our species richness in a small place of 1100 km square is richer than the entire United Kingdom, like flowering plants, butterflies, and birds. We also have clear legislation and administrative controls for conservation. From AFCD, the Country Park Ordinance, Marine Parks Ordinance, etc., Water Supplies Department, the Water Works Ordinance, Antiques and Monuments Ordinance, Town Planning Ordinance, Environmental Impact Assessment Ordinance, enacted by various government departments. But our city is under threat from our housing policy or land use policy, leading us to unsustainable urbanization. We have a long history of land reclamation, as you can see just inside the Victoria Harbor from 1945 to 2007. The harbor became a river. Our coastlines are also disappearing rapidly, despite the establishment and enactment of the Harbor Protection Ordinance in 1997. Land reclamation is still being planned for area outside of the harbor. Sustainable development is about maintaining the natural resources and landscapes for future generations to enjoy and benefit from. A land reclamation or rural development unavoidable. The balance of development and conservation can be explained by following by the following examples. Here is the development of Science Park in the Tolo Harbor using land reclamation on the right hand side. What is the benefit of having the Science Park? Knowledge based economy would be benefited from such development, as we were told, and thus justified. On the left hand side, the development of Tai Long beaches, a building small houses in villages justified or not justified at all. Over the last few decades, the town planning board turned down many proposals of building small village houses there. One last example is the development of the third runway for the Hong Kong International Airport. Due to its significant impacts to Chinese white dolphin, new marine parks are being proposed to compensate, yet the effectiveness of such compensation after the airport project is finished may be too late, as the dolphins are probably already gone by another project of the Hong Kong Macau Jihoi Bridge now under construction. We have arranged a few ships to study the issue. There are several checkpoints to visit the Dong Chong development. Marine Park proposed, the third one way and I.O., where perhaps we could see some dolphins around. 
One of the most important laws to protect our environment is the EIA ordinance, Environmental Impact Assessment Ordinance, EIAO. The EIAO requires all project proponents to submit a strategic environmental assessment studies to be examined by the Advisory Council on the Environment and public consultation for comments and feedbacks. The proponents would have to improve or modify the proposals accordingly. The, factor, the factors considered in the EIAO include the following eight components, air, noise, water, waste, ecological, fisheries, visual and landscape, and cultural heritage. To identify the adverse effects with significant environmental e impacts, mitigation measures are required to offset the adverse effects, <clears throat> and the Environmental Protection Department Director is the gatekeeper to approve or disapprove such project to check if the mitigation measures are good enough to protect the environment. Since its enactment from 1997 until now, for 20 years, a few hundred cases were reviewed under the EIAO. Over 90% got approved and the government proposals always got approved. Here the blue line is the EIA proposed, the green line shows the numbers of projects approved under EIAO. However, there are other elements like social impacts and carbon reduction not included in the assessment, and they should be there. From the UN guidelines, social impact assessment, SIA, would study social change, quality of life, community and health impacts to be included. In Hong Kong, the Hong Kong SAR government is to identify the problems, set goals and targets, and finally take actions at the level of legislature and law enforcement to keep up with balancing economic development and conservation. We have the levels at the bureaus and the departments. They are the Environment Bureau, overseeing EPD, Environmental Protection Department, Energy Policy, Council for Sustainable Development, Food and Health Bureau, overseeing AFCD, Agriculture, Fisheries and Conservation Department, and Food and Environmental Hygiene Department. The Development Bureau also plays an important role too. The members of our Council for Sustainable Development are all appointed and they are important in formulating the policy on sustainable development in Hong Kong. Over the last decades, they have proposed many different policies on different issues like waste management, urban renewal, air quality objectives, asking public opinion. We also have various advisory committees related to environmental policy formulation in Hong Kong, including the ACE Advisory Council on the Environment, CPB, Country Park Board, Energy Efficiency Advisory Committee, Environmental Camping Committee, Town Planning Board, and the Sustainable Development Council. Legislature is important for a better environment to protect our natural habitats, like establishing the sites with special scientific interests, SSSI, nature reserves and parks to be protected in the country parks and marine parks by laws. However, we do have some problems running into the private lands. More parks are needed 
especially for the marine parks, the SSSI are sm small spots but not linked in larger area for proactive protection. And the BASP, B -A -S -B, to be implemented is a city level which is now to be enacted soon. We also have laws to avoid environmental degradation, including the EIAO, Harbor Protection Ordinance, Ordinances for Protecting of Endangered Species under CITES, Civil Pollution Ordinances for Air, Water, Noise, etc. Are they enough? How about green taxes on plastic bags now enacted? Waste charging scheme to be implemented. At this point, you may ask, who make the laws anyway? Who do the law enforcement? This slide summarizes the political framework in Hong Kong in a civic society or civil society. Individuals' impact on ruling government has led to a political lack. Perhaps democratization is the only way out, but we are going to the opposite direction. Our legal, legislative council, with only half democratic system in the geographic constituency and some in functional constituency, in a civil society, include NGOs, non-government organizations, professional bodies, individual citizens, different stakeholder groups, and commercial sectors surrounding the LACCO and the SAR government, which is executive-led. Under the one country, two system mechanism, just now is always one country overruling the two systems. Because the government is elected by a small circle of groups, biased policy towards the commercial sectors, or the Beijing sectors become unavoidable. To conclude, we need to stop our practice of unsustainable urbanization. We need good population policy and concerns of the caring capacity. We need relevant laws and policy, legal regulation in important but more updated laws are needed in a political-led society. We need a paradigm shift from development first to conservation first as resources are limited. Consultation processes should be improved in a civil society, and genuine democracy is badly needed in Hong Kong for better resource allocation and management of our conservation sites and the environment. Here are some group discussion projects for this lecture on sustainable development. Starting with a uh, role play game on a development project, setting guiding principle for sustainable development, asking the question how referendum should or should not be used to settle environmental issue, how poverty can damage the environment and how can we help. Criteria for conservation of heritage sites and wildlife protection. Zero waste or zero growth concepts. Psychic economy and green economy. I hope you find these videos helpful and the questions useful to understand the actual situation of sustainable development in Hong Kong and the world. Goodbye.